former executive turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Connie is ridiculously dedicated to inspiring individuals to activate their power and live their dream as a lifestyle entrepreneur. It's time to sit down, lie down, or squat down and turn up the volume. Up or Out with Connie starts right now. Well, hey, it's Connie Fife, your Unstoppable Diva, and we are back for another episode of Up or Out with Connie. Now, our guest this week, she is on a mission, leading women through their grief of losing a loved one to move forward and reclaim their life back. Now, she, she, she talks about it, and she talks about how grief is a connection that has been lost. And I truly understand that because I've lost several family members this year alone. And that we grieve those that we love, we grieve those that we like, and we also grieve those that we hate or are, are indifferent with. And I, I really do, I, I understand that. I understand because you don't want to see someone perish from a sickness or you know, something tragic or just natural, you know, life passing. But we grieve the loss of partnerships, businesses, relationships. We just grieve loss. And the deep suffering that you experience is your heart is completely broken and, and it's excruciating. And earlier this year, our women's program, we had to change the name of that. And then our website kept crashing because we had so many hits to the website we had over 728,000 hits to the website, and it just took it down. It crashed. I mean, I, I had pains in my chest, and, and I remember talking oh. to my mentor and saying, I really don't know how I feel. And she said, she goes, your heart is broken. She said, that's what you're feeling right now, that your heart is broken. And I said, yes, exactly. You know, you don't think of it. You, you know, you lose a business or something happens or, and it doesn't go the way you want. And especially when you put so much into it that you don't realize that it really does break your heart. And because what's mm-hmm. the point of, you know, of this, um, it's, it's shattering those pieces. And again, it's those feelings of grief. And I learned again the hard way that you need to take a step back and you need to feel that grief and you need to work through that grief because as our guest today is going to be talking about that it's that denial, the anger, the bargaining, the the depression and acceptance. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I lived through every phase of this over the last couple of months from, you know, from my business crashing to losing, you know, members, you know, that have passed on. But I want to introduce the woman who's going to talk about all of this right now on the on the show, the incredible Laura Kelly. Laura, welcome to Up Route with Connie. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Connie. It's an honor to be here. And you are one of the people that reached out to me initially when you had heard about the loss and you know and the grief that was going on with me and my family earlier this year. And you fully understand you fully know what what that means you talk about i was taking a look at your website earlier and you talk about a story of growing up with an incredibly close relationship with your mom where she was your best friend and so she was was everything so again to go through that grief how how have you been able to take that manifest that into ways now where you're helping other other people move beyond their grief well, you know, when I, when I lost my mother, that was like the biggest wake up call for me. Um, you know, she was everything. She was my best friend. She was my biggest support, my cheerleader, everything. And when I lost her, it just really woke me up to, you know, what life is all about. Mm. And I really lost myself. I didn't even know who I was after my mom passed away. It was like, who am I without my mom in my life? And like, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? You know, how am I going to survive without my biggest support and my everything? Because I lost my entire family before that, which isn't a sad story, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I made a promise to my mom on her deathbed though. And I told her, you know, mom, I promise you, I'm going to continue my life and I'm going to live my life purposefully and I'm going to make you proud. And I just 
Well, thank you. Um, but I just knew that I, I needed to keep going. I didn't want to give up. And she was afraid that I would give up because we had such a close connection. Um, so really I, I felt lost and I really turned to spirituality and trusting my intuition and really just being open, um, to whatever was being brought towards me. Um, but you know, it, it was hard throughout the process and so many people would tell me, you know, Laura, why don't you go see a therapist or a counselor or a psychiatrist to like kind of help you get really clear. And, you know, it just wasn't aligned with me and who I was. So I, I really just sat down and I started seeking and reading lots of books and going to workshops and, you know, really trying to find my way and finding out the person that I was. And along the way, it was, it was very challenging. There was many ups and downs, but I'm so grateful for all those moments because it's brought me, you know, here now to help other women. So, so it's really a fulfilling what, what I've been through in my life. And, um, I'm grateful for all the people that I've met along the journey. You know, I wouldn't have met you if I didn't go through right. what I did as well. Right. 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 And I'm so glad that I, that I met you. I lost no. my mom two years ago and I mean, it still seems like yesterday and you know, mm-hmm. with us, we weren't indifferent, but we didn't, I didn't grow up with my mom. So, I mean, I didn't live in the same home as her. So it's, at times it was a challenge, you know, understanding that mom daughter relationship for that reason. But when, again, when she got sick, um, there was nothing more that, you know, that nothing that would have stopped me, but I went to her where she lived in Pennsylvania and stayed with her for a period of time. And I would never, I would never take that back. And, and that, no. You just can't. I mean, and isn't it, it's funny because we look back at all of our struggles and all of our challenges in life, but then we look back and we're so proud of ourselves and we're like, wow, look where, you know, it's brought me to look right. where I am now. Everything's mm-hmm. okay. It's going to work out. And it, and it did. Right. And, um, it's hard no matter what. I mean, the people that we love, they aren't here physically with us, but they are here spiritually here always. Spiritually. Yeah, myself as well. Yeah. I went down that's I mean a bit of spirituality before that, but after that I really went down that even more and understanding, you know, the spirituality of it and you know, and the circle of life and you know, and again people people do come and go out of our life, but you know, we need to learn to take that as a gift. And one of the things that you have in one of your programs is grief as a gift. And I, I true and I, I wholeheartedly believe, believe in that process. So there's the steps of helping women work through the steps. So denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So everyone goes through every one of those phases. I mean, do we ever get to acceptance? Yes, we do. Um, But we have to go along our journey of going through the grieving process. But I love to help and to guide women through, but also to to show them what's next after going through their grief. So, you know, if it's been a few years and, you know, we've gone through this time, like it's really difficult when we first lose like the loss of a loved one that mm-hmm. we almost want to stay and feel all the pain and go through all the feelings. Right. But then we're like, okay, I've gone through this. I, I need to just keep moving forward. Like, how am I going to keep moving forward without them? And really like find out what I'm set out here to do. So I love, you know, showing women like their true, finding their true self throughout the grief as well, where they're able to, it's like, it's like, we're almost like a snake. And when we go through this journey that I take them on, it's like the layers of, you know, the old layers are like falling off. And then you find out who you really are underneath all of that pain, where you like feel free and empowered and unstoppable and really using it as, you know, a gift and showing them that vulnerability is beautiful. And it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. Let me tell you. (laughs) It is beautiful. The one thing that uh, someone had, had said to me when they had lost someone, this was a few years ago, and I was speaking with someone and she said that she couldn't take a vacation because she had guilt because she was taking a vacation without her husband. 
So mm. you know, in, in, you know, in the five areas that you talk about, you know, would that be considered, I don't know, bargaining or, or even denial, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, maybe. Yeah. I would say, yeah, kind of a mix. I would say yeah. denial. I think that maybe she would want to keep herself really busy in order not to, you know, really feel all those feelings and emotions and just try to keep being really busy. So she maybe doesn't need to stay with, just herself, right? You know, right, right. I remember yeah. when, when my father died. She would, she took care of him for a couple of years, uh, for several, a lot of years. He was he had just sicknesses um, quite a bit. But anyway, when he finally when he had passed, and she was like, "Okay, I'm going on a cruise. I'm going line dancing. I'm doing this. I'm doing this." And then within two years, she was diagnosed with cancer herself. You know, so she was mm. you know at the opposite spectrum of. Maybe it was part of that bargaining, you know, that, okay, I did this. No, I, and that's how she rationalized that she was going out and doing all of these things because she had not had the opportunity to do that when he was alive and when she was his caretaker. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So there's so many. Ir- well, and I see so, so much, like, you know, so much that, you know, people just, they're afraid to almost, you know, move into the unknown without yeah. that person and really knowing who they are without mm-hmm. that person in their life. You know, like if, if a wife loses her husband and they've been married for 20 years, it's like a completely different life. And it's who am I without my husband? Right. You know, and right. it really gives you, so yeah, it does give you an opportunity to yes. really go on the spiritual journey, which is so exciting though. Yeah. At the same time, it's scary. Yeah. It's exciting. And that's why I love helping women go through it too, because it's scary doing it by yourself. I did it by myself. It took mm-hmm. me six years and I'm still on the journey too. I mean, grief never. Ends. Yeah. And don't know. And you don't but, know when it's, when it's going to come up. Like when I stayed with my mom, she continued going to Weight Watchers. I mean, it was like, you know, some things that she was still doing. So I was like, yeah, I could use that too. <laughs> so every Tuesday at lunchtime, we went to Weight Watchers. So about, um, I don't know, a couple months ago, I decided, you know what, I probably need, because, you know, there was stress and all this grief, and I, and I knew I wasn't healthy with my eating or anything. So I thought, you know, let me go to Weight Watchers, and, you know, I'll rejoin and kind of, you know, get me back on track. So I go into Weight Watchers, and the woman says, well, when's the last time that you were here? And, and I went, Oh, two years. It was really four. And I said, Oh, two years ago with my mother. And I just start crying. And they're like, Are you okay? Aww. I'm fine. So then I went shopping later that day and I'm at the market and I have Weight Watcher dinners and I'm checking out. And the cashier says, Oh, I go every Tuesday at lunchtime with my mother to White Watchers. And I just looked at her and I just gave her a, a, like Aww. a nasty look, like, Don't talk to me about that. And she was just like, okay. <laughs> but she had to say Tuesday. But really, like, but Connie, that's so beautiful too, though, because it was almost like it was a visit from your mom yes. when that was brought up. Yes. Because uh-huh. it, she's like in your memory, she lives within you. So, and I love to, you know, tell other other people, my mm-hmm. clients. I said, you know, when you're getting upset and you can feel that deep wave of grief coming upon you, yeah. just invite it in. And yes. sit with it, embrace it, love it, to cry, scream, get angry, yeah. and don't be afraid. And then even like closing your eyes and thinking of the loved one that is past and mm-hmm. just spending that moment with them. So you're spending that time of emotion with them. Right, right. You know? Right, exactly, exactly. So I do have some questions for you. I would <laughs> love to keep chatting with you about this, but I, I really do need to get to, to get moving. So the first question, I'd like you to complete this sentence, okay. and that is, I am unstoppable because? Because I am here on a mission to serve other women through their grieving process, especially after the loss of a loved one, and to show them, you know, to find, to reconnect with their true self and to turn their pain into purpose because it's possible. Mm. So my favorite success quote is the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. I'd say that one 
Or I also love Obstacles are Detours in the Right Direction by my mentor, Gabby Bernstein, because obstacles are detours in the right direction. Mm, love that one. You know? Yeah. Does that make sense? I think very. Yeah. Don't, very it's nice. great. Yes. So the next one, my process for evaluating opportunities is? Well, I listen openly and I am so grateful for all the opportunities, but I really also look within myself and to listen to my intuition on whether this is the right path for me or not, because I, I always trust my intuition. If it's saying, yes, this is an amazing opportunity, I go right for it and I put my full heart into it. Mm, that's beautiful. So what is that moment? And I think we know the answer to this one, the moment in your life, the event in your life that has had the greatest impact on you. Well, I've had two greatest moments. And the first one was when my mom passed away mm. and I needed to carry on without her in my life because she was my best friend and everything, as I said before. Right. But also my second my second largest moment was when I made the decision to remove my breast. And that was a really big decision for me because as you know, being a woman, it's a piece of your femininity. And I had so many unanswered questions before going into that surgery. And, you know, it was, it was a really hard one. And especially when I was younger, I struggled a lot with confidence and body image and knowing that I was going to lose my breasts you know, it was really hard for me to come to terms with that. Yes. But then when I did remove my breasts, Connie, it opened up a whole different door to like who I really was within. Okay. And you know, it's not about what's on the outside. It's what's on the inside. Mm. And you know, when you are shining bright from the inside, everything vibrates out of you. And it doesn't make you any less of a woman to not have breasts or not have your ovaries. I mean, we are women and uh, being a woman is beautiful. So really embracing it and, you know, feeling sexy in your own skin. And it was, that was my second really big um, wake up call to life as well. So I've had a few, few big shifts go on, (laughs) Yes, but as we all have. Yeah, I'd I'd say (laughs) so. So what do you, what do you believe is the world's greatest wound? What's the greatest challenge in the world today? I find that people being unconscious to what life is all about. Mm -hmm. And I see so many people walking around and they really just, they haven't woken up to what life really is. And it's sad to say, but you know, sometimes we need to experience tragedy or loss in our life to really get a different perspective. And, you know, if we don't have our spiritual vision either, and so many people don't have it, but, you know, getting really clear on what our spiritual vision is, like, what do we really want in life? How do we want to feel? What do we want to do? And when we really are clear on that and know where we're going, then we really can like narrow in and live a beautiful, joyful, happy life. But so many people are living in sadness and depression and, you know, we're self-medicating ourselves and, you know, we're not eating the right foods. We're not, there's just, you know, so many, like we're not being conscious. And when we're consciously living, then it's, I mean, we can do anything we want. So I find a lot of people just haven't woken up to it yet. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Any grief yeah. or loss that someone has had in their life too. And like you're saying, sometimes they haven't been able to move, move beyond that. Yes, exactly. And I mean, really looking through the lens of love because, yeah. you know, our loved one that had passed, it's not their fault that they're gone. No. I mean, it's just, it's life. We're mm-hmm. all going to, we're all born and we're all going to pass away And, you know, there's a beginning and an ending to everything, but I mean, we're all energy and it's just the way of life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so will you ever be satisfied? Well, this is a good question. I love this one. (laughs) Um, I think that, I think being satisfied is like a state of mind. So we can choose whether we're satisfied or we're not satisfied and it can be an ongoing cycle. 
But really, you know, as long as you're getting out of bed and giving your best and doing all that you can and then going to bed with fulfillment, Mm. that's me, myself being satisfied. I know that, you know, there's never an ending to what I'm doing in this world and I'm going to be doing it until I pass. And it's just, it's so exciting. Like, I think being satisfied is really a state of of mind and we can really bring ourselves to that satisfaction anytime we want. It is. It is truly, truly that mindset. So what's next, Laura? Where do you go from here? I know you have some programs coming up, some phenomenal programs. I'd love you to share that with our listeners and how they can find out more about the programs. Yes. Thank you so much. So I do do coaching one-on-one, but alongside on that, I also am um, releasing a six-week program, which really excited about. It launches on September 10th, and so um, women are enrolling now, and it all has to do with health and nutrition and mindset and soul alignment. So really, I'm sharing my tools uh, that I've learned throughout my grieving process, And I am sharing them with all of the women. But what's so beautiful about this is that we're creating a tribe and it's about, you know, being together and together and sharing our stories and supporting each other, you know, right. one-on-one. And, you know, those three pillars are so important, especially when we're grieving and, you know, really like working out our grief because it's so important that we move our bodies uh, because it releases a lot of emotion. I mean, I'm sure like if you do yoga, I mean, you'll find yourself on your yoga mat just crying. I'm not sure why, but I mean, it's, it's and, and just so important. to move <laughs> And, and then also like to eat the right foods uh, because yes. when we're eating the right foods, our, our brain fog can be lifted and we can start to think clearly. Yes. And really, meditation is so important. And so we're all going to meditate together one morning, but then I'm also giving you the audios and all the tools and everything so you can continue with all of your practice afterwards. Nice. So, so it's going to be a beautiful program, a really special program. And it's not for everyone. It's for women you know, it's been a little while since they've gone through their loss and they have, you know, experienced the beginning stages of grief Mm -hmm. and they know that there's more for them and then to go on that spiritual journey to find who they are, what's the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. So, so that's really exciting that we're starting that. And, um, and then it'll be going on, going on ongoing basis uh, as well. So when you just just for for clarification for our listeners, when you say grief, it's not just the loss of a loved one through death, but it's also divorced oh. or loss of a business. And I know after I got divorced, I mean, I I was lost. I I was, and I actually I joined a group called BE Beginning Experience. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, it, it just helped me through the process. Yes. Uh, yeah. It really helped me through the process. What I did initially after my divorce was I started dating a lot, but that really wasn't the answer. <laughs> that really wasn't the answer. And I had to back up and say, no, wait a minute. What, what do we need to do? And that's what took me down my path of becoming a mentor a counselor and a coach now, you know, for, for business and for people, for people. So it, just having that and having you is just incredible. So I did just want to clarify, it's not just for people who have passed on. No, absolutely not. And, you know, grief affects us in all like our whole life. I mean, in our job being entrepreneurs, I mean, if we don't process our grief being entrepreneurs, you know, how are we supposed to function at a high capacity too? So right important it affects our job our health like everything our relationships so yeah does everything everything around us so i let let our listeners know how they can find you where should they go to what website yes absolutely well i am on facebook and Mm -hmm. uh, it's laura amanda kelly on facebook and then i have i actually have a closed private group on facebook called grieve now and so it's a community of women and there it's an absolutely beautiful place to start if you have gone through loss. 
So I would definitely invite you in there. And I do weekly lives and meditations and I share, you know, tips and my secrets. And then also I would love to offer my healing meditation as well. So I will have to post that link. I'll have to give that to you. Okay. Okay. We'll be posting the link right here when we put when we push out the podcast interview. And, so and I am on Instagram at Grieve Now as well. Okay. Okay. You can find me there. Well, Laura, I want to thank you for being here. And for everyone listening, you can find Laura Kelly at grievenow.com. And you definitely want to watch for this program coming up because we all grieve at one time or another. And again, it's not just a loss of a loved one, you know, by somebody dying, but it's also your jobs, your your relationships, you know, could be divorce or just a separation. There's so much that we grieve in our life. And as women... We, we tend to take on that burden a little bit heavier than we need to. So you, you definitely want to want to check out this information with Laura because your health, your meditating, your health, uh, it's all of it is all part of your well-being. And that helps you be mm-hmm. truly be a high-capacity individual and be proud Absolutely. of who you are. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm th- I want to thank you, Laura, for being here. I'm just so proud of all the work that you do and really oh. just proud to know you and that you're part of our community. Thank you. Well, it's an honor to be a part of the of the community. I I, I love it. It's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. For all of our Upper Raw listeners, grief is a gift. And we all go through it at one point or one another in our life. So this is your opportunity to go up. Check out Laura's program. You truly will not be sorry because you will then be able to live your dream because grief is a gift. And you, I want you to accept that gift. This is Up Around with Connie, and we're a brand of the Fife Group, and we are ridiculously dedicated to inspiring individuals to activate their power, live their dream as a lifestyle entrepreneur, and so we can all be unstoppable together. And I'm Connie Fife, your unstoppable diva. Until next time, activate your power, and we are unstoppable together. Hey, y'all. Thanks for listening to Up or Out with Connie. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest, email the team at bookme at uporout.com. Learn how you can activate your power at activatemypower.com. We'll see you over there. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.